I just wanted to come up to the barn. It's nice and sunny, and we're gonna come up to the barn. I've got a couple questions I wanted to do up here. I brought the brought this tablet. It's a little windy, but hopefully it's not. Hopefully y'all can still hear us okay. Okay, so David Morton said yesterday or a couple days ago, he's sitting in the stairwell of my Taipei apartment having a blast with this video, though maybe my neighbors aren't. That's funny. Uh, the question is, I've always had a hard time doing clean slides. It looks like in, in this video where I was showing morphine, it looks like in that, that morphine video you slide down partially and then end with the hammer on for a clean sound. Could you talk a bit more about slides? Well, yeah, sure, like, in that song, like can see he's talking about morphine. I mean, with, with a, on a fretless banjo, for example, you want to do long, emphasized slides. Like, when I play fretless, like, I'll be like, I will linger those slides out real far because it sounds good on a fretless banjo. It's like boom, boom, sounds like what it's supposed to sound like. But most of us are playing with these fretted, these more modern fretted instruments. And uh, to me, to my ear, I don't do, I don't like the sound of a long slide because it's like, you can hear it. You can hear all those, doesn't sound right to me. So on a fretted banjo, I'll try to accomplish that same kind of long, lengthy slide but in a, in a short, I'll like, I'll drag out a real short slide. So instead of going like, like how I would on fretless, on a fretted banjo, I'll just go. And if you can see like the way I kind of slowly go over one fret to try to accomplish the same the same sound as I would on the fretless where I would just drag it from the first to the fifth. But on this I'll just go. Keep it more syncopated on the fretted banjo. Um, but it's we can go into it more specifically on morphine. Like a lot of people, like one way to do morphine is uh, make this chord where you take your ring finger at the third string at the fourth fret and your first your index finger goes to the first string at the second fret and continue that that open string pull off of air last Saturday night but I find I usually don't do that I'm usually I'm lazy and so I'll just make that slide and then just let it go and come back like that. But you could hold it here and do that. There's a couple different ways, but that's basically the way I would slide on a fretted banjo is very different from the way I would slide on a fretless banjo. Let's see if we can get back in here and answer this other question. So Jonas Notbeck, and Jonas, I just mailed your, your record out the other day. It's coming to you. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> Jonas says, this video, as well as the whole project, is just great. It made it easy for me to understand the song Morphine in like one day and being able to play it more or less fluidly. Your hint for the tuning, tuning it down one full step, is very helpful. Good to know. That's, that's a simple thing that can really change the whole banjo playing experience for you. Just like if, if you want to sing with the banjo but your voice is your, your a higher pitched voice, you would maybe use a capo so you could sing with it or on your guitar. Same thing, if you've got a lower pitched voice like what I'm dealing with, I want to tune the banjo down for me, like to do a whole step lower. And then it's much easier for me to sing with the banjo. If I tune to just standard G tuning, I would have, I can hardly sing up there. And I would just think that I'm, I couldn't sing. But if you just mess, fiddle with the pitch, lower your whole tuning down, suddenly I could sing. So maybe that's what happened to, to Jonas here. But a question for me is, which tuner you think is useful and which different tunings I would need to know when I want to play your type of songs? Um, 
and he asked specifically what tuning is Hustling Gamblers in. Uh, Hustling Gamblers is uh, F sharp D G A D, I'm pretty sure. F sharp D G A D. That's a common good tuning for, for old stuff. Um, I'll have to do another thing on, on I'll ha I've got that written down, I'll do a whole little segment on, on the tunings, on the traditional tunings that, that, that I like to use. As for tuners, I brought this little, this little cheapo tuner up. These are great, I mean, I like the kind you can clip on because that way whatever noise is around you, uh, you can still, it goes off vibration and not off the sound. So the clip-on tuners are the better kind to get. And this is a, a, a Snark brand one. I don't know if y'all can even see, it's not really worth it, but these are cheap. Somebody gave this to me, they're like four or five bucks. Uh, those are good. Just get a cheap clip-on tuner. That'd be the best kind. You don't need to spend money on a tuner. Um, and also, one last thing I'll mention before I let you guys go till later. A lot of people have asked the type of nylon strings that I'm using. This instrument's got just some cheap steel strings. I don't even know what kind, but the nylon strings I'm using lately are these uh, labellas. That hopefully y'all can see that. Um, you know, Labella number 17, bluegrass and country banjo strings. They're nylon and silver plated. And it actually says they are wound with American wire in the USA. So that's cool. The Labella strings, that's what I'm using. And it's just, I didn't pick those for any particular reason. They're just the cheapest kind that I could get. Um, well, I hope that that answered y'all's questions there. It's been a good, a good little session here, and I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching.